Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang & Bang. If you're familiar with Bravo Company, the company, then you know they've got a very deep roster of product testers that they call their gunfighters. Go to their website, check out the list. I think you're going to be very impressed with who's on it. So when Bravo Company decided they wanted to develop their first stock for the AR-15, they went to people on that list and asked them and others, what do you want to see? The answer was something lightweight, something really durable, and something free of features that will snag on gear. The result is the Mod Zero Gunfighter stock. It's seven and a half ounces, making it one of the lightest weight AR-15 stocks. And it's also turning out to be potentially the most durable, toughest collapsible stock you can get for an AR-15. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Mod Zero Gunfighter stock from Bravo Company Manufacturing was designed to be the toughest lightweight AR-15 stock on the market. Compatible with mil-spec receiver extensions, the Mod Zero is purpose-built for rifles that will be used hard and run in dirty, messy, and even frigid conditions. The stout-looking, angular shape serves two purposes, to maximize the stock's strength with the minimum of weight and to be completely devoid of any edges, points, or voids to catch on skin or gear or collect mud, crud, or snow. The most striking feature of the Mod Zero is that the release lever makes up the entire underside of the stock. Right hand, left hand, gloves, no gloves, right side up, upside down, the lever size and location make it easily accessible under an extreme variety of positions and conditions. The lever has minimal texturing, though I haven't noticed a need for any at all. It's so big it's easy enough to just wrap your fingers around the whole thing and squeeze to release the lock pin. I do really like the rib face of the stock's toe. This makes pulling the stock into your shoulder when prone or shooting off a bench more positive whether you're using your hand or a rear bag. The Mod Zero isn't meant to be a precision rifle stock, but the need to shoot prone or support it off a bench obviously was not ignored. One of the most unique features of the Mod Zero Gunfighter stock is the VBOSS, or the Vehicle Borne Operation Sling Tab. It is just a plastic tab designed to keep your sling keeper from sliding down the taper of the stock, whether it's onto the control lever or right down to the receiver extension where it's not going to be doing you any good. Why do you want to have your sling set up like this? It doesn't matter whether you're in a Humvee or an SUV, you could be a hog hunter riding on an ATV or even on horseback and have your rifle strapped to the back of the saddle, it's pretty handy to have your rifle with the sling ready to deploy, but also kept in a manner where it's not gonna snag on things or even get in the way if you need to deploy your rifle very quickly. But it's gonna keep your sling there if you have any need to use it when you first dismount, it's ready to go. Removing the Mod Zero stock isn't as easy as a stock like a B5 Bravo, but it's still designed to be doable in the field. All you need is a firing pin or an Allen key to hold the lock pin against the lever, then pull the lever down to lower the lock pin below the receiver extension. The stock will just slide right off if you use a fat enough Allen key, but smaller keys like this one might require extra downward pressure to fully release the lock pin. Installing the stock is just the reverse of this, and once you pull the Allen key or whatever you're using from the lever, the Mod Zero locks onto the receiver extension with minimal play. Though you might feel some movement if you try to wiggle the stock, it doesn't rattle at all, and you won't notice anything but a solid lockup when you're using your rifle. The Mod Zero Gunfighter is a modular stock with only six parts held together with a single assembly screw. The eighth inch hex head screw is accessible through a hole in the recoil pad, and you can look through one of the QD sockets to line up the key with the screw head. After backing the assembly screw out about a quarter inch, you can pull the recoil pad section off the stock body, dropping the V-bust in the process. This will allow you to fully loosen the assembly screw from the stock body while keeping it captured by the rear section of the stock. If you want to remove the release lever, do not pry it off with a screwdriver or allen key stuck in the slot. That's a drain and prying the lever off can break the stock. Instead, you need to locate the two retention hooks that are in those channels. Those need to be pushed back and down while pulling on the lever. I used some adjustable pliers for this, locked it just the right width to release the hooks. Here you can start to see how the leaf spring and the lock pin fit together. Be sure to hold on to them as you finish unhinging the lever from the stock body. You'll instantly notice that the lock pin and the spring are quite large. This is because they both serve to lock the stock in a position as well as to reduce the play between the stock and the receiver extension that you can find on other adjustable stocks. The spring is made of a polymer that Eric Kinsel described as quite exotic. It's designed to provide the same pressure over the entire useful life of the stock. 
The lock pin is heat treated steel and it's flat on the sides to eliminate material stress that weakens round pins. It also allows it to punch through any crud that might work its way into your receiver extension when you're trying to adjust your stock. Here's where the strength of the Mod Zero gunfighter truly resides. The lock pin inserts into three highly reinforced channels, two that extend up along each side of the receiver extension, and one that runs a full width of the stock. This design is so strong that Mod Zeros consistently survive repeated drops on the concrete from 20 feet up. Most stocks will break after only one or two drops from three feet. The Gunfighter stock doesn't use anti-rotational QD cups. In fact, it doesn't use QD cups at all. Instead, steel plates are molded into the sling area of the stock, which reinforces the stock while serving as extremely robust QD swivel attachments. Doing the same thing with anti-rotational cups built into the box would require a much heavier piece of metal than is necessary, along with more complicated manufacturing. The stock itself provides the anti-rotation, though you still have enough play to make locking your swivel into place fast and easy. Reassembling the Mod Zero is very easy, and you can choose to do so with or without the V-Bost. Once tightened, the assembly screw holds the butt pad section to the stock body, locks the V-Bost in place, and acts as a travel limiter for the release lever. This is a signature of Eric Kinsel's designs, a minimum of parts performing several different roles to accomplish many important tasks. Just because the release lever is big and covers most of the underside of the stock doesn't mean that the stock is prone to accidental release. In fact, you can pick up the entire rifle by the release lever and you're not gonna squeeze it hard enough to release the stock. You're not gonna bump it out of place. You're not gonna place it on a barrier and it come unlatched. You're not gonna place a rear bag underneath and it come unlatched. It takes a concerted effort to squeeze it enough to where you can adjust the stock. And that's the flip side of it. The spring tension is strong enough that some people with weaker grips, some people who might have arthritis, might have trouble adjusting this stock. I gave this rifle as is to my wife, who's a physical therapist. She works with her hands every day. She's a triathlete, she's super fit, but she's small. And it took her a while to get to the point where she could just all the way collapse or all the way open the stock, but she never could get the combination of the brute strength to open the release and the fine motor control to get it into a position that she wanted. I think with more time she could get to where she could do that, but if you are someone with weaker grip because either your size or arthritis or something like that, you might have some trouble adjusting the stock on the fly. I've seen some wondering why the Mod Zero QD sockets orient the swivels horizontally. But as you can see, this allows the sling to follow a snag and kink free path when the stock is shouldered. When it comes to using body armor, many shooters place their butt stocks directly on their front plates, but those who shoulder the rifles above their plates might especially appreciate the shape of the Mod Zero. The design element on the BCM Gunfighter stock that you're seeing in a lot of the newer minimalist stocks that are coming out these days is that it's undercut with a toe at the bottom instead of like the traditional Magpul CTR or other stocks that have a much longer portion underneath the buttstock. And the reason is people with experience with body armor well beyond mine, people who uh, fight in body armor, which is not me, have found that those stocks get hung up on the plate. Whereas a stock with this toe actually helps you rock the stock, rock the, the rifle in a position on your shoulder on the top edge of the plate so that you're, you're not getting a ski effect on the edge of your plate. You're not getting stuck on the plate. It'll just pop right in place or it actually hooks up right into place. And even though, as I said, I am not an operator of any stretch, after reading people who actually have that kind of experience and what they say about stocks like this, I've noticed exactly the same effect in my limited use with body armor shooting with this stock and other stocks. The cheek weld on the Mod Zero Gunfighter stock falls somewhere in between a Magpul CTR, which some people find too narrow, and a B5 Bravo, which I find with my tactical cheekbones to be too fat. It is the Mod Zero, which means that Bravo Company certainly plans to offer different versions of this stock. The rumor is that they are gonna offer different modules so that you could customize your gunfighter stock for your uses and preferences. If you wanna learn more about the Mod Zero gunfighter stock, be sure to click the link in the video description below. 
If you like this video, please take the time to log in and click the like button on YouTube. YouTube needs to know that you like firearms oriented programming. If you want to help the channel even more, be sure to click right here to see how you can contribute to my Patreon campaign. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool things like this gunfighter stock. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.